So it's a midweek battle of the big boys as Blackburn Rovers head down to Fratton Park hoping to get their season back on track. We'll talk about the Portsmouth Blackburn Rovers game next. That's right folks, back once again with another match preview this time. Counting down to the big one. They're all big ones from here on in. Uh, as Blackburn Rovers head south to the coast. Before we get into the thicker things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right. Uh, it was only about maybe 10 years ago that these two sides were scrapping it out in the big leagues, in the Premier League. But now, after some huge rough patches for both Pompey and Rovers, uh, we're here in the third tier. With each have our own set of priorities. Obviously, Blackburn Rovers still hoping to get automatic promotion. And Portsmouth hoping to get into that playoff mix and also sneak in through the back door. Anyways, talk more about the match in detail. The match will take place at Fratton Park on Tuesday, the 13th of February. That is Valentine's Eve, folks. So get your cards and roses at the ready. Uh, last season, Pompey finished first in League Two. Top, current top goal scorer is Brett Pittman with 14 goals. Uh, over the years, Blackburn Rovers and Portsmouth have met an incredible 89 times. And Blackburn Rovers have won 39 of them. Portsmouth winning 26 and the two sides have drawn 24 times between them. So the last five appearances at Fratton Park looked like this last time out. Portsmouth and Blackburn ended up being a nil-nil draw. That was back in the Premier League. The result before that, the 3-2, that was in November 2008 when Pompey beat Blackburn. However, the season before that, the 2007-2008 season, Blackburn were victorious over Pompey. And the second fixture on that list right there was a League Cup victory again for Blackburn at Fratton Park. So the recent form book at Fratton Park is very even. Um, but how will it fare on the night? Let's take a look at our predicted start at 11. First and foremost, the hosts. Portsmouth, McGee will be in goal. Walks, Hawkins, Clark, Donahue, Close, Thompson, Evans, Chaplin, Kennedy and that informed striker. I think he's currently second in the top goal scoring charts in League One behind Marriott from Peterborough. But Pittman is up there leading the line. As for uh, statistics, let's take a look. Uh, Sky has him down for 15 goals, so maybe it's 15 goals in all competitions. Hawkins is there with seven. Lowe's got five. Chaplin has got four. So but they seem to be very reliant on Pittman's goals. However, he did not score last time out. Meanwhile, most yellows. Burgess has seven. Clark has six. O'Keefe has five. And Thompson has five. As for the Reds, at least four guys on Reds. Evans, Thompson, Lowe and Burgess. Into the form book. Uh, last time out, Portsmouth picking up a scrappy victory. Lastminute.com against Milton Keynes Dons. Uh, before that, a home-home draw. A home-home? A 2-2 draw at home for Pompey against Doncaster. In fact, their recent home form is a bit shady. As before that, they lost to Shrewsbury, 1-0. Before that, they lost to Rotherham away. And all the way up to 13th of January, they drew 1-1 at home to Scunthorpe. So some of the big guns come in there and get the result. Pompey, like I said, they are a tricky outfit. They're a big side. They're going to have a huge fan base. And they're going to have a huge turnout, even though it is a midweek match. Anyway, let's take a look at Rovers. This is how I expect them to line up midweek. Briar in goal, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Conway, Bennett, Smallwood, Dak, Graham, and Armstrong. So I've decided to keep Payne on the bench and revert back to the old tried and trusted 4-4-2 uh, with Conway on the left and maybe Dak wandering on the right uh, with Williams and Iambi overlapping, feeding Graham and Armstrong up front. I know Dak's not really a winger, he does his own thing, but that's how I would see them line up. So the statistics of Rovers, it looks like this current top goal scorer is still Bradley Dak with 13 goals. Uh, Danny Graham is in there with 12, but right on his heels is Charlie Morgan after that free kick on the weekend. He's now to 12 and languishing in fourth place is Dominic Samuel with eight goals into the discipline. Smallwood has nine yards, Bennett has seven, Williams has six, Evans has five. As for the Reds, Bennett has two reds, Samuel has one. Uh, so they've scratched off Wharton and they've scratched off uh, Harper. So right now, only two players on the books who have got a red card. As for the form book, uh, it's not pretty reading uh, when you look at it. Well, it's not impressive reading last time out. Obviously, the Dublin Rovers picked up a 2-2 draw at home against Oldham. Before that, they lost to Plymouth, who are on fire at the moment. They, and they did us a good favour on the weekend by beating Shrewsbury. Before that, we did beat Walsall 3-1. But back in 27th of January, we did again 
draw against a struggling side, Northampton. Uh, but fortunately, all the way back, Saturday the 20th of January, we did pick up an impressive, well, I still consider it an impressive, away victory at Fleetwood. So, Blackburn Rovers, Portsmouth, that's one massive fixture midweek. What about the others? Let's take a look at some of the other fixtures. Right at the top left, Wigan take on a Gary Bowie's Blackpool. So hopefully, I know it doesn't look great at the moment, top top of the table versus uh, like fifth from bottom or sixth from bottom. But maybe Gary Bowie will do us a favour. He still loves Rovers deep down and uh, we all love him. So hopefully he can repay some love and give us uh, a bit of a breathing space. And next up, Fleetwood. Like I just said, they are struggling, but uh, they are a tricky, tricky outfit on their day. So hopefully Shrewsbury can stumble again. And also, let's keep an eye on fourth place. Scumfort take on uh, Peterborough, who are trying to get them put their playoff push back on track. So again, it, there's never any easy games in this division. Uh, and obviously, Blackburn take on Portsmouth, which is uh, another tricky game. And if I put my money on it, I would probably. I'm, I don't. I don't want to say this. But I think it smells of a draw. And why does it smell of a draw? If you look at the form table, uh, the last six matches home and away. Blackburn still sitting sixth. Portsmouth not doing too well in 19th. As for the last home matches, Portsmouth ranked third in the current form book. Uh, the last eight home matches. As for the away, Blackburn sits second. So they kind of cancel each other out with a home and away form. So... If it's, uh, if it's like that, I'm going to go with a score draw. That's just a wild prediction anyhow. Now you've heard what I've had to say about the match. What about the fans? What they've been saying on social media? Well, to be honest, we've been pretty quiet, but not on the BRFCS forum. So might as well head over there and check that out. Here's some snippets for you. Dally Dally, first to post on the thread. Well, that was two points thrown away today or a point gained. Thankfully, it wasn't bad as it could have been with Wigan and Shrewsbury both losing. Massive game at Portsmouth on Tuesday. My team would be like this. Raya, Naimbi, Lenehan, Mulgrew, Bell, Travis, Smallwood, Payne, Dak, Armstrong and Graham up front. There's a very positive lineup. Uh, Travis did himself no harm uh, with his performance from the bench on the weekend. Lenehan uh, is, is itching to get back in the first team, but to be honest with you, I think it might be a game too early. He might make an appearance on the bench in my eyes, uh, and I think that's what um, what uh, the gaffer will go with. He'll, get, he'll be on the bench. Meanwhile, one Phil T said this, I'd give Travis a start alongside Smallwood. Travis could really make the second central midfield position on his own because no other player has bothered to grasp that spot this season. Travis has been excellent in his two recent sub appearances, particularly today. When he says today, he means Saturday. I think we're going to quickly discover that Armstrong is an impact player and not a first teamer. I don't think Toon are going to like that. I'm on the other side of the fence there, Phil. I think uh, the more games, are, I, he, he does like to shoot, which I love, but I think uh, the more times he gets a start and now that he's got the hoodoo off his back, I think this boy's going to start knocking in the goals for fun. Anyway, let's check on Al. Big old Al. I think Naimbi needs dropping for a while. He's given two goals away in recent matches, but not being strong enough and being bullied off the ball. Stops breaks forward by stopping and playing the ball back, thus allowing the opposition to regroup. You could be onto something there. I thought Naimbi had a good spell maybe four or five games ago. And yeah, he does look off the ball a little bit. But uh, to be honest with you, that whole back line needs a good kick up the backside. And I'm hoping... I'm hoping, because uh, we all love Mulgrew, he knows how to take a cracking free kick and a corner kick and uh, penalties and you, you need that assurance on the pitch when that sort of situation comes up. Uh, so he needs to be playing, but his defensive duties are not the greatest. He's a good uh, uh, noggin, a good head to have at the back in the back four to command, but he is also known to have a few errors. So, you know, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. And obviously I still I want Mulgrew on the pitch in some capacity you know, maybe, maybe he could partner alongside uh, Smallwood in that central uh, midfield spot. Maybe we could push Bennett uh, out wide to be an uh, option on the wing. Anyway, there's some food for thought for, Mo, uh, for Mowbray. Meanwhile, Tom Phil said this, there'll be changes again, both selection and tactics, and I think we'll lose this by two or three. Another big crowd and fired up team, another midweek game, and another set of ready-made excuses. To be honest with you, I'd be tempted to go with a 4-4-2 with two banks of four and get right back to basics. If he's going to play defensive on the wings, 
then he'll do it properly instead of expecting strikers, midfielders or defenders to sit there and turn it into Harry Chapman when we counter. I think we're in for a sticky patch for a game or two, then hopefully get it together again. He's gone for 3-1 to Pompey. As for Darren Rover, he said 4-4 back in two uh, with a high pressing tempo with players playing in positions that they're most comfortable with and best at end of. As for Blue Boy, 3-3-3-3. Tough one to call. Interesting to see how Mowbray reacts to a second disappointing result on the spin. He'll no doubt change the team again. A narrow defeat wouldn't be a surprise. JH Rover said this, Our returning players ought to be a big positive. We've done well in recent months with a lot of quality out injured. We're told that in the next few weeks, most of those should be back available. Any League One side welcoming back Lenehan, Chapman, Antonison, Whittingham and Evans to fitness in the next few weeks should be too much for this league. However, I get the impression here that the more options we have available, the more confused Mowbray is going to end up and the more chopping and changing we are going to see in order to ensure everybody gets game time. As for Simon Garner's 194, a difficult game. Fratton Park has always been a tough place to get results for us. Their fans get right behind their side. Will our need to perform from the kickoff mindset change or will it be the second half mountain to climb show? Roll the dice. As for Arboricho, uh, Portsmouth will play an aggressive, high-tempo game, the type of which we have struggled against this season. And first and foremost, Mowbray has yet to get players to match this. Our aim has to be to keep a clean sheet to give us a chance of winning. But to do this, we need to be compact with two banks of four and not letting Portsmouth play between these lines. If Graham is picked, he simply has to do more than hold up the ball and retain possession. As for Stones Rick, well, we all know how Tony the T likes to try his various formations. So how about this to keep it basic and simple? Raya in goal, Nayimbi, Williams, Smallwood, Mulgrew, Downing, Bennett, Payne, Graham, Dak and Armstrong. Sub Samuel. Not quite as good as Elsie Bray, Newton, Clayton, England, McGrath, Douglas, etc, etc. But it seems Tony is confusing himself. His players and the supporters. So this might also confuse Pompey as well. Attack, 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 attack. Not bad, me old mucker. Meanwhile, Gavlar Somerset Rover said, let's get Lenehan back in for this. Time to drop downing. Lenehan will bring some physicality that we've been lacking and allow us to play a, a higher line. Heading down to this one, two. Last time I watched Pompey, uh, a certain Ryan Nelson made his debut at right back with the axe also making his two. In a one nil win with Gamps bagging the winner. Same scoreline will do me fine. As for J Jim MK2, It'll be a tough old game on Tuesday. Portsmouth for hard work inside and get a good support from their vociferous fans. Fancy word there, buddy. The formation and players matters less than the mental attitude of the team. If Rovers aren't up for it, like at Port at Plymouth or the first half against Oldham, we'll get beaten. It's all down to Moby to get them in the right frame of mind. A draw would be acceptable, but I fear defeat. Pompey 2-1. Well, over the years, a number of players have played for both Portsmouth and Blackburn Rovers. You did see three other ones earlier in the Ewood Park uh, game, but at Fratton Park. Let's go for a striker's edition. Check out this fella, Luke Varney, once on Blackburn Rovers books, was also on Portsmouth's books. As for this striker sensation, more of a hot topic for Pompey than there was for Blackburn Rovers, it's Benjani. And wrapping it up is this fella, Yakubu. Yeah, he had a decent one season at Blackburn Rovers, but that season is the dreaded season that we got relegated, I do believe. And he then left to join China team or Russia team or something like that. Uh, he chased the cash, chased the cash instead of helping us get right back at the first attempt. Uh, and he also played for Portsmouth. There are a number of other players that have played for Blackburn and Portsmouth. Uh, and if you want to check out the full list, head over to my WordPress site. There is a link in the description below. It'll bring you up with a full list of the players that I've already mentioned and many, many more. Now you've heard what the fans have had to say, you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say, but what really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks. And again, close your eyes, take a look. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers.
So it's going to get a little bit confusing at the top of the table in the next few weeks with the FA Cup and the Checker Trade Cup and all that kind of stuff. Delaying Shrewsbury, delaying Wigan. We'll then play more games than they have. And then hopefully, out of all that mixture and mess, maybe we can stumble ourselves into the top two promotion spots and put some pressure on these two boys uh, at the top of the table. But first and foremost, if we can get a win here at Fratton Park and they stumble, well, well, well then the pressure will begin right here, right now. So, fingers crossed for a result on Tuesday, and then we kick on for the next one, which will be very, uh, around about Monday or something. It's like a Monday fixture. Not too sure about that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.